So, um, what I want to do with you is just kind of go over. I'm just going to give you give you one general form of an equation. Oh, I'm sorry, an equation for an ellipse, a hyperbola, um, a parabola. Actually, you know, what? I'm just going to give you the yeah. I'll give you the general form of an equation of a ellipse, hyperbola, circle, and a parabola. All right, and then that will help us kind of determine what we're going to be looking at. So, let's look at an ellipse. Ellipse, if you guys remember, x minus h squared plus y minus k squared. And let's just do b squared over a squared. All right, this would be a, and that equals 1. This would we, we be know that is going to be an ellipse with a vertical major axis of symmetry. Here's an equation of a hyperbola. And let's do uh, x minus h squared minus y minus k squared over a squared over b squared. In this case, we have a hyperbola. Now, since my x is over my a, this would be one where we have a transverse axis is horizontal. Uh, let's do the equation of a circle. Uh, circle would be x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. Okay. And then let's look at a parabola. And let's just do uh, x squared, or keep the center, x minus h squared equals 4p y minus k. Right? So those are kind of your general forms. We know that there's two, two different forms of an ellipse, one with a major axis that's horizontal and one a major axis that's vertical. Right? To change that, we'd swap the x and the y's up here. Um, we know a hyperbola, we can have a transverse axis that's vertical or hor that's horizontal or vertical. And we do that again by changing the x and y's over here. However, for circle, uh, we're only going to have one equation because a circle has the same major axis of symmetry or same, same major and minor axis, they're equal lengths. And a parabola, we could have the x's and the y's could be switched depending if we're going to have a parabola that's going to open up or down or left or right. Now, so I didn't write down all the equations because we don't need to. What I want to do is to kind of discuss one thing and then look at that, how that relates to a general form. So what I have here is I have four examples of conic sections that are written in a general form. And what we need to do is by looking at that equation, we need to determine is it an ellipse, hyperbola, circle, or parabola. All right. So if we look at this general equation, what we did is I gave some coefficients, a, c, d, e, and f. All right. And what we're going to do, and actually let me change this to a B, just to maybe kind of make this a little bit less confusing, even though I know previously we've done a, a C. But let's just focus on our A and our B coefficient. All right. So no matter what, we're, what equation we're going to look at, we're going to look at what are, the, what are the coefficients of our x and our y squareds. OK? Does everybody see what I did? I want to focus on our a and our b. Now, let's look at what would a and b, even though they're lowercase here, what would our a and b be our case? Well, guys, dividing by x minus h divided by b squared, is that the same thing as multiplying by 1 over b squared times x minus h squared? Is that the same thing? Instead of dividing by, is it the same thing as like multiplying by 1 over b squared? Is that the same thing? Yeah, OK. So what I want to do is I want to look at this. And if I take, since I'm taking this, this time plus this, that means my a and my b are going to have to be, if they're both positive, since it's a, like in this problem, this is an addition problem, right? So that means that my b is positive and my a is positive, right? Because if I made this a negative, well, then the problem would be subtracting. So if these are both positive, the multiplication, the product of those two values has to be larger or greater than 0. If I take two positive numbers and I multiply them, does that have to be larger or smaller than 0? Larger, yeah. So for an ellipse, what I can do is if I say my a times b is greater than 0, then it is an ellipse. All right, let's look at a hyperbola. See, on a hyperbola, my b squared is always negative. It's always going to be negative. If it's not negative, then it's not a hyperbola. It could be an ellipse, right? But if I have a minus b, 
That means A is positive and B is negative, right? So if you can write something as a hyperbola, one of them is negative. So if you do A times B and if one of them is negative, does it have to be, does it have to be less than 0? Yes. And then yeah. So a hyperbola is A times C when it's less than 0. All right. Now let's look at a circle. If we were to divide our circle, let's say, see a, oops, this equals 1. Um, rat, let's say we wanted this to equal 1. So we divide by r squared. Therefore, then this would now equal 1. Now, I know I don't have a and b in here, but let's replace our r squared with an a and our b. Our, is our a and our b the same value? Are our two denominators the same value? They're both r squareds, right? So therefore, in this case, a and b are not separate. But we could say a is equal to b. So if a is equal to b, then you have a circle. And then a parabola is very helpful, because when we look at a parabola, we only have one x squared, right? We don't even have another x squared. We don't even have a y squared. We're only provided with one square value, right? So therefore, you could say when a times c equals 0, because the, or a times b. Because therefore, one of the, if, it, if I don't have an x squared or a y squared, then that coefficient has to be 0. So let's go and take a look at our problems and see if we can determine which one is a parabola, which one's an ellipse, which one's a hyperbola, and which one is a um, circle. So let's look at the first two. Again, all I did was, all I did was I took these coefficients of my x squared and my y squared, and let's multiply them. So 6 times 6 equals 36. So what do we have for 30? Well, anyways, sorry. So we know that's greater than 0, but we know that 6 is equal to 6, right? So what happens when we have our two coefficients are equal to each other? That is now a circle. So we can say this one is a circle. Here, I do 6 times 9. 6 times 9 we know is greater than 0. So therefore, it has to be an, an ellipse. Here, I do 4 times negative 12, which is equal to negative 48, which is less than 0. So therefore, this is a hyperbola. And then over here, I have 1 times, I don't have a y squared, do I? So it's 0, which equals 0. So therefore, this has to be a parabola. You got that, Olivia? So there you go. Does that make sense? A little bit better sense?